the wife of Bath's tale. The Prologue Experience, though none authority, were in this world is right enough for me to speak of woe that is in marriage. For lordings, since I twelve year was of age, thank it be God that is eternal live, husbands at the church door have I had five. For I so often have ye wedded be, and all were worthy men in their degree. But me was told, not long a time gone is, that sithen Christa went never but once to wedding, in the kind of Galilee, that by that ilk example taught he me, that I not wedded should be but once. Lo, hearken eke a sharp word for the nonce. Beside a well, Jesus, God and man, spake in reproof of the Samaritan. Thou hast ye had five husbands, said he, and thilk a man that now hath wedded thee is not thine husband. Thus said he, Sir Tyne, what that he meant thereby I cannot sign. But that I ask, why the fifth man was not husband to the Samaritan? How many might she have in marriage? Yet heard I never tell in mine age upon this number definition. Men may divine and glossen up and down, but well I wot, express without a lie, God bade us four to wax and to multiply. That gentle text can I well understand. Eek, well I wot, he said, that mine husband should leave father and mother, and take to me. But of no number mention made he, of bigamy or of octogamy. Why then should men speak of it villainy? Lo here, the wise king Dan Solomon, I trow that he had wives more than one, as would to God it lawful were to me to be refreshed half so oft as he. What gift of God had he for all his wives? No man hath such that in this world alive is. God wot this noble king, as to my wit, the first night had many a merry fit, with each of them so well was him on live. Blessed be God that I have wedded five. Welcome the sixth whenever he shall, for since I will not keep me chaste in all, when mine husband is from the worldy gone, some Christian man shall wed me anon. For then the apostle saith that I am free to wed a God's half where it liketh me. He saith that to be wedded is no sin, better is to be wedded than to brin. What recketh me, though folk say villainy, of shrewd Lamech and his bigamy? I wot well Abraham was a holy man, and Jacob eke as far as ever I can, and each of them had wives more than two, and many other holy men also. Where can ye see, in any manner age, that high God defended marriage? By word express. I pray you tell it me, or where commanded he virginity? I wot as well as you it is no dread. The apostle, when he spake of maidenhead, he said that precept thereof he had none. Men may counsel a woman to be one, but counselling is no commandment. He put it in our own judgment. For had a god commanded maidenhead, then had he damned wedding out of dread. And certes, if there were no seedy so, virginity then whereof should it grow? Paul durst not command an, at the least, a thing of which his master gave no hest. The dart is set up for virginity. Catch whoso may, who runneth best, let see. But this word is not ta'en of every wight, but there as God will give it of his might. I wot well that the apostle was a maid, but natheless, although he wrote and said, he would that every wight were such as he, all is but counsel to virginity. And since to be a wife he gave me leave of indulgence, so is it no reprieve to wed a me, if that my make should die without exception of bigamy. All were it good no woman for to touch, he meant as in his bed or in his couch. For peril is both fire and tow to assemble, ye know what this example may resemble. This is all and some, he held virginity more profit than wedding in frailty. Frailty, clep I, but if that he and she would lead their lives all in chastity. I grant it well, I have none envy who maidenhead prefer to bigamy. It liketh them to be clean in body and ghost. Of mine estate I will not make a boast. For well ye know, 
A lord in his household hath not every vessel all of gold. Some are of tree, and do their lord service. Good calleth folk to him in sundry wise, and each one hath of God a proper gift, some this, some that, as liketh him to shift. Virginity is great perfection, and continence eke with devotion. But Christ, that of perfection is the well, bade not every wight he should go sell all that he had, and give it to the poor, and in such wise follow him and his lore. He spake to them that would live perfectly, and lordings, by your leave, that am not I. I will bestow the flower of mine age, in the axe and in the fruits of marriage. Tell me also to what conclusion were members made of generation, and of so perfect wise a white ye wrought. Trust me right well, they were not made for naught. Glows whoso will, and say both up and down, that they were made for the purgation of urine and of other things small, and eke to know a female from a male. And for none other cause? Say ye no, experience what well it is not so. So that the clerks be not with me wroth, I say this, that they were made for both, that is to say, for office and for ease. Of engender, there we God not displease. Why should men Ellis in their book is set? That man shall yield unto his wife her debt. Now wherewith should he make his payment if he used not his silly instrument? Then were they made upon a creature to purge urine and eke for engender. But I say not that every wight is hold, that hath such harness as I to you told, to go and use them in engender. Then should men take of chastity no cure. Christ was a maid, and shapen as a man, and many a saint, since that this world began, yet ever lived in perfect chastity. I will not be with no virginity. Let them with breed of purid wheat be fed, and let us wives eat our barley bread. And yet with barley bread, Mark tell us can, our Lord Jesus refreshed many a man. In such a state as God hath clept us, I'll persevere. I'm not precious. In wifehood I will use mine instrument as freely as my Maker hath it sent. If I be dangerous, God give me sorrow. My husband shall it have, both eve and morrow, when that him list come forth and pay his debt. A husband I will have. I will no let, which shall be both my debtor and my thrall, and have his tribulation withal upon his flesh, while that I am his wife. I have the power during all my life upon his proper body, and not he. Right thus the apostle told it unto me, and bade our husbands for to love us well. All this sentence me liketh every deal. Upstart the pardoner, and that anon. Now, dame, quoth he, by God and by St. John, ye are a noble preacher in this case. I was about to wed a wife, alas! What, should I buy it on my flesh so dear? Yet had I lever wed no wife this year. Abide, quoth she, my tale is not begun. Nay, thou shalt drinken of another ton ere that I go, shall savour worse than ale. And when that I have told thee forth my tale of tribulation in marriage, of which I am expert in all mine age, that is to say, myself hath been the whip, then mayest thou choose whether thou wilt sip of the tune that I sh now shall broach. Beware of it, ere thou too nigh approach, for I shall tell examples more than ten. Whoso will not beware by other men, by him shall other men corrected be. These same words writeth Ptolemy. Read in his Almagest, and take it there. Dame, I would pray you, if your will it were, sighed this pardoner, as ye began, tell forth your tale, and spare for no man, and teach us young men of your practique. Gladly, quoth she, since that it may you like, but that I pray to all this company, if that I speak after my fantasy, to take not a grief what I may say, for mine intent is only for to play. Now, sirs, then will I tell you forth my tale, as ever I may drink wine or ale, I shall say sooth. The husbands that I had three of them were good, and two were bad. The three were good men, and rich, and old. Anethis might they the statute hold, in which that they were bounden unto me. Yet what well what I mean of this, pardy, 
as God me help, I laugh when that I think how piteously at night I made them swink. But by my fay I told of it no store. They had me given their land and their trezor. I mean it did not do longer diligence to win their love or do them reverence. They loved me so well by God above that I told no dainty of their love. A wise woman will be busy in her ever in one to get their love, where that she hath none. But since I had them wholly in my hand, and that they had given me all their land, why should I take keep them for to please, but it were for my profit or mine ease? I set them so a work by my fay that many a night they sang well away. The bacon was not fetched for them, I trow, that some men have an Essex at dumb now. I governed them so well after my law, that each of them full blissful was and fa to bring me gay things from the fair. They were full glad, when that I spake them fair, for, God it what, I chide them spidiously. Now hearken how I bear me properly. Ye wise wives that can understand, thus should ye speak, and bear them wrong on hand, for half so boldly can there no man swear in and lion as a woman can. I say not this by wives that be wise, but if it be when they them misadvise. A wise wife, if that she can her good, shall bear them on hand the cow is wood, and take witness of her own maid, of their assent. But hearken how I said, Sir old Cainard, is this thine array? Why is my neighbor's wife so gay? She is honored over all where she goeth. I sit at home, I have no thrifty cloth. What dost thou at my neighbor's house? Is she so fair? Art thou so amorous? What roanst thou with our maid, Benedict? Sir old letter, let thy japes be. And if I have a gossip or a friend, without guilt, thou chidest as a fiend, if that I walk or play unto his house. Thou comest home as drunken as a mouse, and preachest on thy bent with evil prefa. Thou sayest to me, It is a great mischief to wed a poor woman for costage, and if that she be rich of high parage. Then sayest thou, that it is a tormentry to suffer her pride and melancholy. And if that she be fair, thou very knave, thou sayest that every holler will her have. She may no while in chastity abide, that is assailed upon every side. Thou sayest some folk desire us for riches, some for our shape, and some for our fairness, and some for she can either sing or dance, and some for gentleness or dalliance, some for her hands, and her arm is small. Thus goes all to the devil by thy tale. Thou sayest, men may not keep a castle wall that may be so assailed over all, and if that she be foul, thou sayest that she coveteth every man that she may see. For as a spaniel she will on him leap, till she may find some man her to cheap, and none so grey goose goes there in the lake. So sayest thou, that will be without a make. And sayest, it is a hard thing for to weld a thing that no man will, his thanks held. Thou sayest thou, Laurel, when thou goest to bed, that no wise man needeth for to wed, nor no man that intendeth unto heaven. With wild a thunder dint and fiery leaven mote thy wicked neck to be broke. Thou sayest that dropping houses and eke smoke, and chiding waves, make men to flee out of their own house. Ah, Bendicte, what aileth such an old man for to chide? Thou sayest we wives will our vices hide, till we be fast, and then we will them shew. Well, may that be a proverb of a shrew. Thou sayest that oxen, asses, horses, hounds, they be assayed at differs stounds, basins and lavers, ere that men them buy, spoonus, stoolus, and all such husbandry, and so be pots, and clothes, and awry. But folk of wives make none assay, till they be wedded, old dotard shrew. And then, sayest thou, we will our vices shew. Thou sayest also, that it, displeaseth, that it displeaseth me, but if that thou wilt praise my beauty, and but thou pour always upon my face, and call me a fair dame in every place, and but thou make a feast on thilke day that I was born, and make me fresh and gay, 
and but thou do to my norris honour, and to my chamberer within my bower, and to my father's folk, and mine allies, and mine allies. Thus sayest thou, old barrel full of lies. And yet also of our prentice Jenkin, for his crisp hair shining as gold so fine, and for he squireth me both up and down, yet hast thou caught a false suspicion. I will him not, though thou wert dead to-morrow. But tell me this, why hidest thou, with sorrow, the keys of thy chest away from me? It is my good as well as thine, party. What thinks to make an idiot of our dame? Now by that lord that called his Saint Jame, thou shalt not both, although that thou wert would, be master of my body and my good, the one thou shalt forego, maugre thine eyen. What helpeth it of me to inquire and spy in? I trow thou wouldest lock me in thy chest. Thou shouldest say, Fair wife, go where thee lest. Take your disport. I will believe no tales. I know you for a true wife, Dame Alice. We love no man. What taketh keep or charge where that we go, we will be at our large. Of all the men most blessed may he be, the wise astrologer Dan Ptolemy, that saith this proverb in his Almagest. Of all men his wisdom is highest, that recketh not who hath the world in hand. By this proverb thou shalt well understand, have thou enough, what thar thee reck or care, how merrily that other folks fare. For certes, old dotard, by your leave, ye shall have pleasure right enough at eve. He is too great a niggard that will wern a man to light a candle at his lantern. He shall have never the less light, pardy. Have thou enough, thee thar, not plain thee, thou sayest also. If that we make us gay with clothing and with precious array, that it is peril of our chastity. And yet, with sorrow, thou enforcest thee, and sayest these words in the apostle's name. In habit made with chastity and shame, ye women shall apparel you, quoth he, and not in tressed hair and gay paree, as pearls, nor with gold, nor clothes rich. After thy text, nor after thy rubric, I will not work as much as a gnat. Thou sayest also, I walk out like a cat, for whoso will descend the cat's skin, then will the cat well dwell in her inn. And if the cat's skin be sleek and gay, she will not dwell in house half a day, but forth she will, ere any day be dawed, to shew her skin and go a caterwaud. This is to say, if I be gay, Sir Shrew, I will run out my borel for to shew. Sir old a fool, what helpeth thee to spy in? Though thou pray Argus with his hundred iron to my wardacorps, as he can best in faith, he shall not keep me, but me lest. Yet could I make his beard, so may I the. Thou sayest eke that there be thingus three, which thingus greatly trouble all this earth and that no white may endure the firth. O Lephus, sir shrew, may Jesus short thy life. Yet preachest thou, and sayest thou, a hateful wife ye reckoned is for one of these mischances. But there none other manner resemblances that ye may liken your parables unto, but if a silly wife be one of thou. Thou likenest a woman's love to hell, to barren land where water may not dwell. Thou likenest it also to wild fire. The more it burns, the more it hath desire to consume everything that burnt will be. Thou sayest, right as wormish shend, a tree, right so a wife destroyeth her husband. This know they well that be to wives bond. Lordings write thus, as ye have understand, bear I stiffly mine old husbands on hand, that thus they sighten in their drunkenness and all was false, but that I took witness on Jenkin, and upon my niece also. O oh Lord, the pain I did them, and the woe, full guiltless by God a sweet pine! For as a horse I could a bite and whine, I could a plain, and I was in the guilt, or else oft time I had been spilt, who so first cometh to the nil, first grint. I plained first, so was our wary stint. They were full glad to excuse them full blithe Of things that they never a guilt their live. Of wenches would I bear them on hand, When that for sickness scarcely might they stand, Yet tickled I his heart, for that he weaneth, That I had of him so great chert. 
I swore that all my walking out by night was for to espy wenches that he dight. Under that color I had many a mirth, for all such wit is given us at birth. Deceit, weeping, and spinning, God doth give to women kindly, while that they may live. And thus of one thing I may vaunt to me, at the end, I had the better in each degree, by slight or force, or by some manner thing, as by continual murmur or grudging, namely a bed, there had they mischance. There would I chide, and do them no pleasance. I would no longer in the bed abide, if that I felt his arm over my side, till he had made his ransom unto me, then would I suffer him do his nicety. And therefore every man this tale I tell, win whoso may, for all is for to sell. With empty hand men may no hawkis lure, For winning would I all his will endure, And make me a feigned appetite. And yet in bacon had I never delight. That made me that I ever would them chide. For though the Pope had sitten them beside, I would not spare them at their own board, For by my troth I quit them word for word, As help me very God omnipotent. Though I right now should make my testament, I owe them not a word, that is not quit, I brought it so about by my wit, that they must give it up, as for the best or else we had never been in rest. For though he look it as a wood lion, yet should he fail of his conclusion. Then would I say, Now, good Alefa, tack keep, how meekly looketh Wilkin our sheep. Come near, my spouse, and let me ba thy cheek. Ye should be all patient and meek, and have a sweet e spiced conscience, since ye so preached of Job's patience. Suffer alway, since ye so well can preach, and but ye do, certain we shall you teach that it is fair to have a wife in peace. One of us two must bow, doubtless, and since a man is more reasonable than woman is, ye must be sufferable. What aileth you to grudge thus and groan? Is it for ye would have my love alone? Why, take it all. Lo, have it every deal, Peter. Shrew you, but ye love it well, for if I would sell my bell it shows, I could walk as fresh as is a rose, but I will keep it for your own tooth. Ye be to blame by God, I say you sooth, such manner word as had we on hand. Now will I spaken of my fourth husband. My fourth husband was a reveller, that is to say he had a paramour, and I was young and full of raggery, stubborn and strong and jolly as a pie. Then could I dance to a harp a small, and sing ye wis as any nightingale, when I had drunk a draught of sweet wine, Metellius, the foul churl, the swine, That with a staff bereft his wife of life, For she drank wine, though I had been his wife, Never should he have daunted me from drink. And after wine of Venus, most I think, For all so sure as cold engenders hail, A licorice mouth must have a licorice tail. In woman vinolent is no defence, this no lechers by experience. But Lord Christ, when that it remembereth me upon my youth and on my jollity, it tickleth me about mine heart root. Unto this day it doth mine heart boot, that I have had my world as in my time. But age, alas, that all will envenime, hath me bereft my beauty and my pith. Let go, farewell, the devil go therewith. The flower is gone, there is no more to tell, The bran, as I best may, now must I sell. But yet to be right merry will I fand, Now forth to tell you of my fourth husband. I say, I in my heart, and great despite, That he of any other had delight. But he was quit by God and by Saint Joseph, I made for him of the same wood a cross. Not of my body in no foul manner, But certainly I made folks such cheer, that in his own grease I made him fry for anger and for very jealousy. By God in earth I was his purgatory, for which I hope his soul may be in glory, for, God it wot, he sat full oft and sung, when that his shoe full bitterly him wrung. There was no wight save God and he, that wist in many wise how sore I did him twist. He died when I came from Jerusalem, and lies in grave under the rudebeam although his tomb is not so curious as was the sepulchre of Darius, which that appell is wrought so subtly. It is but waste to bury them preciously. Let him farewell, God give his soul rest. He is now in his grave and in his chest. 
Now of my fifth husband will I tell, God let his soul never come into hell, And yet was he to me the most shrew, That feel I on my ribbis all by rue, And ever shall until mine ending day. But in our bed he was so fresh and gay, And therewithal so well could he me glossa, When that he would have my belle shows, Though he had beaten me on every bone, Yet could he win again my love anon. I trow I loved him better, for that he was of his love so dangerous to me. We women have, if that I shall not lie, in this manner a quaint fantasy. Whatever thing we may not lightly have, thereafter will we cry all day and crave. Forbid us thing, and that desire we. Press on us fast, and then a we will flee. With danger utter we all our chaffair, great press at market maketh dear wear and too great cheap is held at little price. This knoweth every woman that is wise. My fifth husband, God his soul bless, which that I took for love and no riches, he sometime was a clerk of Oxenford, and had left school and went at home to board with my gossip, dwelling in our town. God have her soul, her name was Alison. She knew my heart and all my privity, but then our parish priest, so may I the to her betrayed I my counsel all, For had my husband pissed on a wall, Or done a thing that should have cost his life To her, and to another worthy wife, And to my niece, which that I loved well, I would have told his counsel and every deal. And so I did full often, God it wot, That made his face full often red and hot For every shame, and blamed himself. For he had told me so great a privity, And so befell that once, in a lent, so oftentimes I to my gossip went, For ever yet I loved to be gay, And for to walk in March, April, and May, From house to house, to hear sundry tales. That Jenkin clerk, and my gossip, Dame Alice, And I myself, into the field as went. Mine husband was at London all that lent. I had the better leisure for to play, And for to see, and eke for to be say, Of lusty folk, what wist I where my grace was shapen for to be, or in what place? Therefore made I my visitations, to vigilies, and to processions, to preachings eke, and to these pilgrimages, to plays of miracles and marriages, and weird upon me gay scarlet gites. These worms, nor these moths, nor these mites, on my apparel fret them never a deal, and knowst thou why? For they were used well. Now will I tell forth what happened me. I say that in the field is walked we, Till truly we had such dalliance, This clerk and I, that of my purveyance I spake to him, and told him how that he, If I were widow, should wedded me. For certainly, I say for no bobbins, Yet was I never without purveyance Of marriage, nor of other things eke. I hold a mouse's wit, not worth a leek, That hath but one hole for to start to, And if that fail, then is all I do. I bear him on hand, he had enchanted me, my dame taught me that subtlety, and eke I said, I met of him all night, he would have slain me as I lay upright, and all my bed was full of very blood. But yet I hoped that he should do me good, for blood betokened gold as me was taught. And all was false, I dreamed of him, right not, but as I was followed I my dame's lore, as well of that as of other things more. But now, sir, let me see, what shall I sign? Aha! By God, I have my tale again. When that my fourth husband was on beer, I wept Algate and made a sorry cheer, As wives must, for it is the usage, And with my kerchief covered my visage. But, for I was provided with a make, I wept but little that I undertake, To Churchill was mine husband born a morrow, With neighbours that for him made sorrow, And Jenkin, our clerk, was one of those. As help me God, when that I saw him go, after the beer, Methought he had a pair of legges, and of feet so clean and fair, That all my heart I gave unto his hold. He was, I trow, a twenty winter old, And I was forty, if I shall say sooth. Gat-toothed I was, and that became me well, I had the print of St. Venus's seal. As help me God, I was a lusty one, and fair, and rich, and young, and well begone, for certes, I am all venerian in feeling, and my heart is Martian. Venus me gave my lust and licorishness, and Mars gave me my sturdy hardiness. Mine ascendant was Torah, and Mars therein. Alas, 
alas, that ever love was sin, I followed I mine inclination by virtue of my constellation. That made me that I could not withdraw my chamber of Venus from a good fella. Yet have I Marta's mark upon my face, and also in another privy place. For God so wisely be my salvation, I love never by discretion, but ever followed mine own appetite. All where he short or long or black or white, I took no keep so that he liked me. How poor he was, neither of what degree. What should I say, but that at the month's end this jolly clerk, Jenkin, that was so hend, had wedded me with great solemnity, and to him gave I all the land and fee that ever was me given there before, but afterward repented me full sore. He will to suffer nothing of my list. By God he smote me once with his fist, for that I rent out of his book a leaf, that of the stroke of mine ear waxed all deaf. Stubborn I was, as is a lioness, and of my tongue a very jangleress. And walk I would, as I had done before, from house to house, although he had it sworn, for which he oftentimes will to preach, and me of old Roman justice teach how that Sulpicius Gallius left his wife, and forsook for term of all his for naught but open-headed he her say, looking out at his door upon a day. Another Roman told he me by name, that for his wife was at a summer game without his knowing, he forsook her eke, and then would he upon his Bible seek that ilka proverb of Ecclesiast, where he commandeth and forbiddeth fast, man shall not suffer his wife go roll about. Then would he say right thus without a doubt, Whoso that buildeth his house all of sallows, and pricketh his blind horse, over the fallows, and suffereth his wife to go see callows, is worthy to be hanged on the gallows. But all for naught, I set not a haw of his proverbs, nor of his old saw, nor would I not of him corrected be. I hate them that my vices tell me, and so do more of us, God wot, than I. This made him wood with me all utterly, I will not forbear him in no case. Now will I say you sooth by St. Thomas, why that I rent out of his book a leaf, for which he smote me, so that I was deaf. He had a book that gladly night and day, for his disport, he would it read alway. He called it Valerie and Theoprast, and with that book he laughed alway full fast. And eke there was a clerk some time at Rome, a cardinal that hight a St. Jerome, that made a book against Jovinian which book was there, and eke Tertullian, Chrysippus, Trotola, and Heloise, that was an abbess not far from Paris, and eke the parables of Solomon, Ovidus art, and Bordus many one. And all these were bound in one volume, and every night and day was his costume, when he had leisure and vacation from other worldly occupation, to read in, in this book of wicked wives. He knew of them more legends and more lives than be of good wives in the Bible. For, trust me well, it is an impossible that any clerk will speak a good of wives, but if it be of holy saints' lives, nor of none other woman, never the mo who painted the lion, tell it me who. By God, if women had a written stories, as clerkes have within their oratories, they would have writ of men more wickedness than all the mark of Adam, many redress the children of Mercury and Venus, be in their working full contrarious. Mercury loveth wisdom and science, and Venus loveth riot and dispense, and for their diverse disposition each falls in others' exaltation, as thus, God wot, Mercury is desolate in Pisces, where Venus is exalted, and Venus falls where Mercury is raised. Therefore no woman by no clerk is praised. The clerk, when he is old, and may not do a Venus's works not worth his old shoe, then sits he down, and writes in his dotage, that women cannot keep their marriage. But now to purpose, why I told thee that I was beaten for a book party. Upon a night Jenkin, that was our sire, read on his book as he sat by the fire, of Eva first, that for her wickedness was all mankind brought into wretchedness, for which that Jesus Christ himself was slain, that bought us with his heart a blood again. 
lo here express of women may ye find that woman was the loss of all mankind then he read me how samson lost his hairs sleeping his leman cut them with her shears through which a treason lost he both his iron then he read me if that i shall not lion of hercules and of his dejanir that caused him to set himself on fire Nothing forgot he of the care and woe that Socrates had with his wives too. How Xantippe cast piss upon his head. This silly man sat still as he were dead, his whipped head, and no more durst he sign, but ere the thunder stint there cometh rain. Of Phasiphae, that was queen of Crete, for shrewdness he thought the tale sweet. Fie, speak no more, it is a grisly thing, of her horrible lust and her liking of Clytemnestra for her lechery that falsely made her husband for to die, he read it with full good devotion. He told me eke for what occasion Amphiorax at Thebes lost his life. My husband had a legend of his wife, Eraphile, that for an out of gold had privily unto the Greekest told, where that her husband hid him in a place for which he had at Thebes sorry grace. Of Luna, he told me, and of Luci, they both made their husbands for to die, that one for love, that other was for hate. Luna, her husband, on an evening late, empoisoned had, for that she was his foe. Lucia licorice loved her husband so, that for he should always upon her think. She gave him such a manner love-drink, that he was dead before it were the morrow. And thus Algate's husbands had a sorrow. Then he told me how one Latimeus, complained to his fellow Arius that in his garden growed such a tree on which he said how that his wives three hanged themselves for heart dispiteous. O oh, leave a brother, quoth this Arius, give me a plant of thilk a blessed tree, and in my garden planted shall it be. Of later date of wives hath he read that some have slain their husbands in their bed, and let their letter dight them all the night, while that the corpse lay on the floor upright, and some have driven nails into their brain, while that they slept, and thus they have them slain. Some have them given poison in their drink. He spake more harm than heart a may bethink. And therewithal he knew of more proverbs than in this world there groweth grass or herbs. Better, quoth he, thine habitation be with a lion or a foul dragon than with a woman using for to chide. Better, quoth he, high in the roof abide than with an angry woman in the house they be so wicked and contrarious. They hate that their husbands love an eye, he said. A woman cast her shame away when she cast off her smock. And furthermore, a fair woman, but she be chaste also, is like a gold ring in a sow's nose. Who could ween, or who could suppose that woe in mine heart was, and the pine? And when I saw that he would never find to read in on this cursed book all night, all suddenly three leaves have I plight out of this book, right as he read, and eke I with my fist so took him on the cheek, that in our fire he backward fell adown and he upstart, as doth a wood-lion, and with his fist he smote me on the head, that on the floor I lay as I were dead. And when he saw how still that there I lay, he was aghast, and would have fled away, till at the last out of my swoon I bride. Oh, hast thou slain me, thou false thief, I said? And for my land hast thou murdered me? Ere I be dead, yet will I kiss thee, and near he came and kneeled fair adown, and said, Dear sister, Alison, as help me God, I shall thee never smite. For that I have done it is thyself too white. Forgive it me, and that I thee beseek. And yet eftsoons I hit him on the cheek, and said, Thief, thus much I am a reek. Now will I die, I may no longer speak. But at the last, with much care and woe, we fell accorded by ourselves too. He gave me all the bridle in my hand, to have the governance of house and land, and of his tongue, and of his hand also. I made him burn his book anon right, though, and when that I had gotten unto me, by mastery all the sovereignty, and that he said, Mine own true wife, do as thee list the term of all thy life, 
keep thine honor and eke keep mine estate. After that day we never had debate. God help me so, I was to him as kind as any wife from Denmark unto Ind, and also true, and so was he to me. I pray to God that sits in majesty, so bless his soul for his mercy dear. Now will I say my tale, if ye will hear. The friar laughed when he had heard all this. Now, dame, quoth he, so have I joy and bliss, this is a long preamble of a tale. And when the Sompnor heard the friar gale, Lo, quoth this Sompnor, God his arms too, a friar will intermeet him evermo. Lo, good men, a fly and eke a frere will fall in every dish and eke matere. What speakst thou of perambulation? What? Amble or trot, or peace, or go sit down, thou lettest our disport in this matter. Yea, wilt thou so, Sir Sompnor? quoth the frere. Now by my faith I shall, ere that I go, tell of a Sompnor such a tale or two, that all the folk shall laugh in this place. Now do, else, friar, I beshrew thy face, quoth this Sompnor and I beshrew me, but if I tell a tale two or three of friars ere I come to Sittingbourne, that I shall make thine heart for to mourn, for well I wot thy patience is gone. Our host cried, Peace, and that a nun, and said, Let the woman tell her tale, ye fair as folk that drunken be avail. Do, dame, tell forth your tale, and that is best. All ready, sir, quoth she, right as you lest. If I have license of this worthy frere? Yes, dame, quoth he, tell forth, and I will hear. THE TALE In olde days of the King Arthur, of which that Britain speak of great honour, all was this land full filled of fairy. The elf queen with her jolly company danced full oft in many a green maid. This was the old opinion, as I read. I speak of many hundred years ago, but now can no man see none elves mo, for now the great charity and prayers of limitors and other holy frères that search every land and every stream as thick as motes in the sunbeam, blessing halls, chambers, kitchens and bowers, cities and burgess, castles high and towers, thorps and barns, shepens and dairies. This makes that there be now no fairies. For there is one to walk a was an elf, There walketh now the limitor himself, In undermels and in morrowings, And saith his matants and his holy things As he goes in his limitation. Women may now go safely up and down, In every bush and under every tree. There is none other incubus but he, And he will do them no dishonour. And so befell it, that this King Arthur had in his house a lusty bachelor, that on a day came riding from river, and happened that, alone as she was born, he saw a maiden walking him before, of which maiden a nun, Mogra her head, by very force he reft her maidenhead, for which oppression was such clamour and such pursuit unto the King Arthur, that damned was this knight for to be dead by course of law, and should have lost his head. Peraventure such was the statute, though, but that the queen and other ladies mo, so long they prayed the king of his grace, till he his life him granted in the place, and gave him to the queen, all at her will, to choose whether she would save him or spill. The queen thanked the king with all her might. And after this thus spake she to the knight, when that she saw her time upon a day, Thou standest yet, quoth she, in such array, that of thy life yet hast thou no surety. I grant thee life, if thou canst tell to me what thing is it that women most desiren. Beware, and keep thy neck-bone from the iron. And if thou canst not tell it me anon, yet will I give thee leave for to gone a twelve-month and a day, to seek and leer, an answer suffisant in this matter. And surety will I have, ere that thou pace, Thy body for to yielden in this place. Woe was the knight, and sorrowfully psyched, But what, he might not do all as him liked, And at the last he chose him for to wend, And come again right at the year's end, With such answer as God would him purvey, And took his leave, and wended forth his way. 
He sought in every house and every place, Whereas he hoped for to find a grace, To learn a what thing women love the most. But he could not arrive in any coast, Whereas he might find in this matter Two creatures according and fair. Some said that women loved best richess, Some said honour, and some said jolliness, Some rich array, and some said lust abed, And oft time to be widow and to be wed. Some said that we are in our heart most eased, When that we are y-flattered and y-praised. He went full nigh the sooth, I will not lie, A man shall win us best with flattery, And with attendance and with business, Be we y-lamed, both more and less. And some men said that we do love the best For to be free, and do right as us lest and that no man reprove us of our vice, but say that we are wise and nothing nice. For truly there is none among us all, if any wight will claw us on the gall, that will not kick, for that he saith us sooth. A say, and he shall find it, that so doth. For be we never so vicious within, we will be held both wise and clean of sin. And some men said, that great delight have we, for to be held stable and eke sacred and in one purpose steadfastly to dwell, and not beray a thing that men us tell. But that tale is not worth a rake-steel. Pardy, we women can a nothing heal. Witness on Midas, will ye hear the tale? Ovid, amongst other things, small. Saith Midas had, under his long hairs, growing upon his head, two asses' ears, the which vice he hid, as best he might, full subtly from every man's sight. That, save his wife, there knew of it no more. He loved her most, and trusted her also. He prayed her that no creature she would tell in of his disfigure. She swore him, nay, for all the world to win, she would not do that villainy or sin, to make her husband have so foul a name. She would not tell it for her own shame. But natheless her thought that she died, that she so long should a counsel hide, her thought it swelled so sore about her heart, That needes must some word from her a start, And, since she durst not tell it unto man, Down to a marish fast, thereby she ran, Till she came there, her heart was all afire, And, as a bittern bumbles in the mire, She laid her mouth unto the water down. Beray me not, thou water, with thy sound, Quoth she, to thee I tell it, and no more. Mine husband hath long ass's ears too. Now is mine heart all whole, now is it out. I might no longer keep it out of doubt. Here, may ye see, though we a time abide, Yet out it must, we can no counsel hide. The remnant of the tale, if ye will hear, Read in Ovid, and there ye may it leer. This knight of whom I tell especially, When that he saw he might not come thereby, that is to say, what women love the most, Within his breast full sorrowful was his ghost. But home he went, for he might not sojourn, The day was come that homeward he must turn, And in his way it happened him to ride, In all his care under a forest side, Where as he saw upon a dance go Of ladies four and twenty, and yet mo. Toward this ilka dance he drew full yearn, the hope that he some wisdom there should learn. But certainly, ere he came fully there, he vanished was this dance, he knew not where. No creature saw he that bare life, save on the green he sitting saw a wife. A fouler wight there may no man devise. Against this knight this old wife gan to rise, and said, Sir knight, hereforth, lieth no way, tell me what ye are seeking by your fay. Peraventure it may the better be, These older folk know much a thing, Quoth she. My leve mother, quoth this knight, Certain, I am but dead, But if that I can sign, What thing it is that women most desire? Could ye me wis? I would well quite your hire. Plight me thy troth here in mine hand, Quoth she, The next thing that I require of thee, Thou shalt it do, If it be in thy might, and I will tell it thee ere it be night. Have here my troth, quoth the knight, I grant. Then, quoth she, 
I dare me well avant. Thy life is safe, for I will stand thereby. Upon my life the queen will say as I. Let's see which is the proudest of them all, That wears either a kerchief or a call, That dare say nay to that I shall you teach. Let us go forth without a longer speech. Then Ronan she a pistol in his ear, And bade him to be glad, and have no fear. When they were come unto the court this night, said, He had held his day as he had height, And ready was his answer as he said, Full many a noble wife, and many a maid, and many a widow, for that they be wise. The queen herself, sitting as a justice, assembled be his answer for to hear, and afterward this knight was bid appear. To every wight commanded was silence, and that the knight should tell in audience what thing that worldly women love the best. This knight he stood not still as doth a beast, but to this question anon answered, with manly voice that all the court it heard. My liege lady, generally, quoth he, women desire to have the sovereignty, as well over their husband as their love, and for to be in the mastery him above. This is your most desire, though ye may kill, do as you list, I am here at your will. In all the court there was no wife, nor maid, nor widow, that contraried what he said, but said, he worthy was to have his life. And with that word upstart that old wife, which that the knight saw sitting on the green. Mercy, quoth she, my sovereign lady queen, ere that your court depart, do me right. I taught this answer unto this knight, for which he plighted me his troth there, the first thing I would of him require. He would it do if it lay in his might. Before this court, then, I pray thee, Sir Knight, quoth she, that thou me take unto thy wife, for well thou knowest that I have kept thy life. If I say false, say nay, upon thy fay. This knight answered, Alas, and well away, I know right well that such was my behest. For God's love, choose a new request, take all my good, and let my body go. Nay, then, quoth she, I shrew us both two, for though that I be old and foul and poor, I nulled for all the metal nor the ore, that under earth is grave, or lies above, but if thy wife I were, and eke thy love. My love, quoth he, nay, my damnation, alas, that any of my nation should ever so foul disparaged be. But all for naught, the end is this, that he constrained it was, that needs he must wed, and take this old wife, and go to bed. Now will the some men say, paraventure, that for my negligence I do no cure, to tell you all the joy, and all the ray, that at the feast was made that ilka day. To which thing shortly answer in I shall, I say there was no joy, nor feast at all, there was but heaviness and much sorrow, for privily he wed her on the morrow, and all day after hid him as an owl. So woe was him, his wife looked so foul. Great was the woe the knight had in his thought, when he was with his wife to bed he brought. He wallowed, and he turned to and fro. This old wife lay smiling evermo, and said, Dear husband, Benedict, Fair is every knight thus with his wife as ye? Is this the law of King Arthur's house? Is every knight of his thus dangerous? I am your own love, and eke your wife, I am she which that saved hath your life, And certes yet did I you ne'er unright. Why fare ye thus with me this first night? Ye fare like a man had lost his wit. What is my guilt? For God's love tell me it, And it shall be amended if I may. Amended, quoth this knight, alas, nay, nay, it will not be amended never mo. Thou art so loathly, and so old also, and thereto comest of so low a kind, that little wonder though I wallow and wind. So will the God mine heart would breast. Is this, quoth she, the cause of your unrest? Yea, certainly, quoth he, no wonder is. 
Now, sir, quoth she, I could amend all this, If that me list, ere it were days three. So well ye might bear you unto me, But for ye speaken of such gentleness As is descended out of old riches, That therefore shall ye be gentlemen. Such arrogancy is not worth a hen. Look who that is most virtuous alway, Prive and apert, and most intendeth I To do the gentle deed as that he can and take him for the greatest gentleman. Christ will we claim of him our gentleness, not of our elders for their old riches, for though they gave us all their heritage, for which we claim to be of high parage, yet may they not bequeath for no thing to none of us their virtuous living that made them gentlemen called to be, and bade us follow them in such degree. Well can the wise poet of Florence, that height Dante, speak of this sentence. Lo, in such manner rhyme is Dante's tale. Full sell, apriseth by his branches small prowess of man, for God of his goodness wills what we claim of him our gentleness. For of our elders may we nothing claim but temporal things that man may hurt and maim. Eek, every white knows this as well as I, If gentleness were planted naturally Unto a certain lineage down the line, Prive and apert, then would they never find To do of gentleness the fair office, Then might they do no villainy or vice. Take fire and bear it to the darkest house Betwixt this and the mount of Caucasus, And let men shut the doors and go then. Yet will the fire as fair and light bren, as twenty thousand men might it behold, Its office natural eye will it hold, On peril of my life till that it die. Here may ye see well how that gentry Is not annexed to possession, Since folk do not their operation alway, As doth the fire, lo, in its kind, For, God it wot, men may full often find, A lord's son do shame and villainy. And he that will have price of his gentry, For he was born of a gentle house, And had his elders noble and virtuous, And will himself do no gentle deeds, Nor follow his gentle ancestry, that dead is. He is not gentle, be he duke or earl, For villain sinful deedest make a churl, For gentleness is but the renomy Of thine ancestors for their high bounty which is a strange thing to thy person. Thy gentleness cometh from God alone. Then comes our very gentleness of grace, it was no thing bequeathed us with our place. Think how noble, as saith Valerius, was Thilca Tullius Hostilius, that out of Provert rose to high reed in Senec, and reed ache in Boeta. There shall ye see express, that it no dread is, that he is gentle that doth gentle deeds. And therefore, live husband, I conclude, Albeit that mine ancestors were rude, Yet may the high God, and so hope I, Grant me his grace to live virtuously. Then am I gentle, when that I begin To live virtuously, and wave sin. And whereas ye of povert me reprieve, The high God on whom that we believe, In willful provert chose to lead his life, and certes every man, maiden, or wife, may understand that Jesus, heaven's king, ne would not choose a virtuous living. Glad poverty is an honest thing, certain. This will Senec and other clerkes sign, whoso that holds him paid of his provert, I hold him rich, though he hath not a shirt. He that coveteth is a poor wight, for he would have what is not in his might. But he that not hath, nor coveteth to have, is rich, although ye hold him but a knave. Very povert is sin properly, juvenal saith of povert merrily. The poor man, when he goes by the way, before the thieves, he may sing and play. Povert is hateful good, and, as I guess, a full great bringer out of business. A great amender ache of sapience, to him that take it is... <coughs> To him that taketh it in patience. Povert is this, although it seem a lange, Possession that no wight will challenge, 
Poverty, full often, when a man is low, Makes him his God, and eke himself to know. Poverty, a spectacle is, as thinketh me, Through which he may his very friend see. And therefore, sir, since that I you not grieve, Of my poverty no more may reprieve. Now, sir, of elder ye reprieve me, And certes, sir, though none authority were in no book ye gentles of honour say that men should an old white honour and call him father for your gentleness and author shall i find in as i guess now there ye say that i am foul and old then dread ye not to be a cuckold for filth and eld also may i the be great wardens upon chastity but natheless since i know your delight i shall fulfil your worldly appetite Choose now, quoth she, one of these things twy, To have me foul and old till that I day, And be to you a true humble wife, And never you displease in all my life, Or else will ye have me young and fair, And take your adventure of the repair, That shall be to your house because of me, Or in some other place, it may well be. Now choose yourself whether that you like it. This knight adviseth him, and sore he saketh. But at the last he said in this manner, My lady and my love, and wife so dear, I put me in your wise governance. Choose for yourself which may be most pleasance, And most honour to you and me also. I do no force the weather of the two, For as you liketh it sufficeth me. Then have I got the mastery, quoth she, Since I may choose and govern as me lest. Yea, certes, wife, quoth he, I hold it best. Kiss me, quoth she, we are no longer wroth, For by my troth I will be to you both. This is to say, yea, both fair and good. I pray to God that I may stirve a wood, But I to you be all so good and true, As ever was wife since the world was new. And but I be to-morrow as fair to seen, As any lady, empress, or queen, that is betwixt the east and eke the west, Do with my life and death right as you lest. Cast up the curtain, and look how it is. And when the knight saw verily all this, That she so fair was, and so young thereto, For joy he hent her in his arms too, His heart bathed in a bath of bliss, A thousand times on row he gain her kissed. And she obeyed him in every thing That might do him pleasant or liking, And thus they live unto their lives' end In perfect joy. And Jesus Christ us send Husbands meek and young, And fresh in bed, And grace to overlive them that we wed. And eke I pray, Jesus, to short their lives, That we'll not be governed by their wives. And old and angry niggards of dispense, God send them soon of very pestilence, End of The Wife of Bath of Geoffrey Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales